Welcome to Power Play for January 13th. Well, there's no heart of gold beating inside rocker Neil Young's chest for the Alberta oil sands. To me, it's a basic matter of integrity on the part of Canada. Canada is trading integrity for money. That's what's happening under the current leadership in, in Canada, which is a very poor imitation of the George Bush administration in the United States. Boomtown. Now, you know, it's providing money for all kinds of people for the next few years. But it doesn't think about our grandchildren. It doesn't think about the future. Where every day in Alberta, even with the tar sands the way they are now, the amount of CO2 coming out of the tar sands industrial sites is equal to every car in Canada. Well, ouch. But we'll ask the experts at the California-based Canadian's attack on the Fort McMurray mines and his comparison to Hiroshima hurts Canada's economic giant. Also ahead, all senior economic ministers are joining the Prime Minister's mission to Israel and Jordan this weekend. We'll ask the strategists why a nation with a fraction of 1% in trade with Canada rates such a blue-chip, red-carpet delegation. And Ontario took the hardest hit last month in job losses. Now with by-elections just ahead and a general provincial election expected in the spring, the opposition leader says he has a plan to stop the hemorrhaging. Tim Hudak is just ahead. And there'll be no burqa ban in Montreal's public workforce if city council has its way. We talked to the Montre a Montreal city councillor who says the Quebec Charter of Values should not apply to city workers as hearings open in Quebec's second largest city. But first, he's not exactly a southern man sitting helpless by waiting for the oil sands to be harvested. I'm sorry, I was trying to get as many Neil Young song titles into one sentence as I could. The aging rocker came out angrily denouncing the energy mega project as the Hiroshima of North America, the latest in a long lineup of celebrities denouncing the resource. Well, the prime minister's office reacted quickly. Stephen Harper's communications director issued a statement saying, even the lifestyle of a rock star relies to some degree on the resources developed by thousands of hardworking Canadians every day. Sharing the stage with Mr. Young was Athabasca Chippewan First Nations Chief Adam Allen. He joins us on the phone from somewhere in northern Ontario where he's currently traveling. Welcome to the program, Chief Allen. Appreciate you taking, or Chief Adam, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Um, this is going to raise a lot of money for your legal war chest. What exactly are you fighting against, and is there any possible compromise? Uh, you know, there's always a compromise if uh, Canada was reluctant to sit at the table and say, you know, let's let's uh, honor the treaty because uh, ACFN has been in uh, negotiations with Canada for the last uh, 20 years or so in regards to uh, some of the treaty promises that were uh, issued when negotiations had started. So, you know, th those um, staggered numbers right now that we have before Canada uh, you know, could greatly bring economic stability to the First Nation, but uh, Canada uh, reluctantly refuses to uh, negotiate in good faith. See, that's the problem you've got, isn't it? Because the oil sands do bring a, an economic lifeblood to your people, and yet you're concerned about the health impacts. How do you strike the right balance? Well, I think at this point in time, the, re the, w the way we strike the right balance is that we find an avenue where we could sit down, you know, from uh, nation to nation, and let's start talking about what we could do to fix the problem. Because of right now, ACFN, from our position, we've always been willingly and uh, capable to sit at the table, but uh, the government continues to refuse to sit down with the First Nations and address our concerns. Are you worried about some of the reports that say that the health impacts on your people are uh, not connected to the oil sands? I mean, that some of these reports have been a little discredited and, and you could be denying them a brighter future even though there's no real health impacts. Are you pretty certain there's a connection? There is a connection. Uh, it's been proven by Dr. Schindler's reports. It's been proven by Dr. Uh, Kevin Tinley's reports and other scientists, scientific reports that are out there that have been proven. It's just too bad that the uh, federal government uh, has burnt, uh, you know, sent off all the scientists, scientific reports to the refinery to get those burnt up, that no evidence would be left hanging around in regards to uh, adverse effects to uh, major development in certain areas. 
So is there, I want to get back to the fact that health impacts are going to happen if these mines are expanded, in your view. Is there a way for these mines to go ahead? Is there a way to give you some reassurance that these health impacts will be reduced or eliminated? Well, in, in more ways than one, we could move ahead and say, yeah, it's okay to develop at a, at a rate that we're going at right now, or else we could sit back and say, okay, let's let's take a look at this and see what, what is wrong, you know, and we're asking for a community-based health monitoring study for our region, and, uh, you know, the feds want to do it, the provincial government want to do it, but the only problem is, is that they want to own the information, and they want to only let out the information that they think that the public should know, and they want to keep it uh, hidden under the wraps, and we're saying, if we do this, everybody is and ownership of the health study, everybody should be um, given the correct uh, answers that we're asking in regards to this health study, and therefore, you know, we could work with that, but the government refuses to do so. All right, Chief Adam, it's uh, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you. Well, celebrity activism, uh, particularly against energy projects such as the oil sands and pipelines, is certainly spreading. Among those publicly opposing these projects have been actors Robert Redford, Mark Ruffalo, Daryl Hannah, and movie director James Cameron. I guess the question is whether these high-profile attacks actually influence public opinion. For her take on celebrity influence, we're joined by Dr. Anita Krines of the Center for Media and Celebrity Studies. And to discuss the cause being advocated by Mr. Young, we have Jillian McEachern of Environmental Defense. They both join us from Toronto. Bottom line to you, Anita, should the government be fretting this celebrity pylon against the oil sands and pipelines? I think so. I think celebrities do have a lot of drawing power. They garner international media attention. They can fundraise. Um, they can start new groups like Rock the Vote. Um, Live Aid started with one man, Bob Geldof, and 1.5 billion people watched that program and, almost, and raised almost $100 million. So this is just the start of celebrity activism on the tar sands. I think we're going to see more and more celebrities sign on. Do you think, Anita, I'll stick with you for a second, is resistance on this futile, or what could the government do to counter it? Um, I would hope that the government would uh, learn from it. I think what celebrity activism does is, is it raises ethical questions beyond um, money. Um, I think the Stephen Harper government is focused on short-term gain and profit, and what celebrity activism does is it introduces art as a form of communication, art that is more than art for art's sake, but art that is about ethics. And there's a whole history in, in art as ethics, and T Leo Tolstoy uh, said that um, true art evokes reverence for the dignity of the life of every human being and the life of every animal and promotes neighborly love and you know the great works of art such as Les Miserables, Victor Hugo have Christ-like figures that are, are, are promoting social justice so I think that's what the Stephen Harper government should be afraid of and that is that it is introducing the issue of conscience into this debate Interesting. Jelly McCacker, I want to bring you in here. I mean, uh, Neil Young has a long history of advocating causes. Uh, this is not his first, probably not his last. But I'm wondering what you thought when he put forward the Hiroshima analogy, uh, again, put that as a comparison to what's going on in Fort Murray. Wasn't that a bit insulting to one of the great catastrophes of, of our time? I think one thing to keep in mind is that for every celebrity like Neil Young who speaks out about issues, particularly tar sands issues these days, there are tens of thousands of people who share those concerns. So these people aren't alone, and I think the value that they add is that they can elevate these issues to a profile that uh, First Nations, community groups, nonprofit environmental organizations have trouble doing, particularly when we're combating the tens of millions of dollars that the federal government and the oil industry are spending on glitzy PR ads to uh, convince the Canadian and American publics that these projects are somehow safe for us. So I think that's one piece of context that's really important when we're talking about these sort of celebrity moments when, when you get a lot of attention on these issues. And I think one of the things that um, Neil Young has done is really brought home in a more visceral way in some ways what it's like to visit that area. And, you know, you're speaking to Chief Alan Adam uh, before we came on, and they're living with that every day. And I've been to Fort Chippewan and talked to people, and 
he's able to to bring to light the devastation and and the Neil Young is the, the, the devastation and put it into words for people when often these concerns can be raised for for decades and get kind of ignored so I think that's really important and I think that we'll see this type of thing continuing to grow but Jillian, I want to stick with you on that I mean there, there's been some disputed health care health findings on the impact of the oil sands particularly in the in the Chippewan area um, is it a health issue they're talking about or is it a treaty fight that we're in well I, my understanding is it's both um, you know you have an elevated cancer rate in the community that was verified by the Alberta government um, and at the same time we know that in recent evidence over the last couple of years in particular by people like Dr. Schindler has shown that we have chemicals that are carcinogenic for humans leaking from the tailings ponds into the surrounding areas so you know it's always difficult in such a small population to provide the absolute definitive proof but I think that the evidence is clear that there's a huge reason to have concern about the health impacts of tar sands development and the tailings ponds in particular. Um, it is obviously a, a treaty issue as well, and that's why we're seeing so many legal challenges right now to the tar sands, which I think are really going to start to impact these expansion plans as we move forward and pipeline plans as well. Um, and, and, and then to extend it further to the other impacts, um, there are concerns about climate change, which are becoming more and more elevated, particularly as in Canada we're experiencing this sort of crazy swinging weather that is associated with the impacts of climate change. Anita Kranz, I want to go back to you on this one. Um, I was listening to some of the Neil Young news conference and he certainly seemed to be factually erroneous, at least on a key point where he said uh, oil sands go to China when really they don't, they go to the states but uh, or Canada. Uh, does accuracy matter or is the power of celebrity such that people believe everything that's said whether it's right or wrong? Um, I think that just like any activist um, obviously accuracy does matter and I, I think that Neil Young does bring a lot of experience to the issue and you know I'm sure any of us can make errors and I, I wouldn't focus on those. I would focus on the big picture and what he's trying to do and that has raised awareness about uh, what is what Robert Redford called the dirtiest oil on the planet. Um, Neil, um, Robert Redford did a, a video for the National Resource Defense Council. Hannah Arendt uh, participated in a direct way by getting arrested in 2012 in Texas, uh, opposing the expansion of the P P XL pipeline. Um, and then she got arrested again last year with Robert Kennedy uh, in Washington. So I, I, I find these uh, actions by celebrities very admirable and I think what we need to do is look at the bigger picture and what they're trying to do and they're, they're putting their celebrity on the line to, to promote some awareness and I think by and large they do get the facts right and all of us make mistakes but by and large I think they have their message is, is right on. Okay, interesting discussion. Thank you both for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you.